KSL Outdoors with Adam Eakle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle. Well, the pheasant hunt season is in full swing and to celebrate, Ascent VIP Services, the Arrow 103.5 and KSL Outdoors decided to give a fall pheasant hunt away to two viewers. Well, we've picked the two viewers and we've decided to kick our show off tonight here at Larry H. Miller Ford here in Salt Lake. And how you doing, Scott? Good, how are you? Pleasure. Hey, we got some excited winners. We got to uh, head down to Provo, I guess, and pick them up. Let's do it. Let's load the trailer and get out of here. All right, you boys ready? Yep. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Scott has brought his two boys, Isaac and Dominic, along for our hunt. We've loaded up a few ATVs behind the new EcoBoost Ford F-150, the best-selling truck in America for over three decades. The EcoBoost is a six-cylinder engine, a 3.5 liter, and it actually outperforms V8s. Uh, yeah, and one of the main things, I mean, you get the towing capacity with the truck far greater than, than, than there has been in the past, but you also get fuel economy. This truck right here uh, on the freeway averages over 20 miles per gallon. It'll tow about 11,000, a little over 11,000 pounds. It's got big torque ratings, big horsepower ratings, all out of a, a V6 engine. And what does that is it's got a, you know, the twin turbo system on it. How you doing? Good. It's me, sir. Nice talking to you the other day. Well, congrats on winning. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. This limo's amazing, isn't it? Stuart is the winner of our fall pheasant hunt giveaway and decided to take his son, Chris, along for the ride. Well, should we load up? Let's get going. Let's go. All right, climb on in. This isn't your ordinary hunt. Ascent VIP Services is treating us to a limo ride in this 39-foot Cadillac Escalade. Our next stop, Hatch Ranch and the retreat at Pheasant Run. Where we'll have two full days of hunting birds. It's a great experience to be able to go, stay overnight, hunt pheasants, and be able to be entertained by a private chef. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's do it. hoo yeah. Well, Hass Ranch was established in 1976. I think we're the, the oldest operating hunting club, uh, pheasant hunting club in, in Utah right now. Royd also owns one of the largest hatcheries in the U.S., hatching over a half a million game bird chicks annually. There's a pretty good chance if you're hunting in Utah, you're hunting birds that, are, that started right in my hatchery. We'll have four dogs working and there's only a few rules you gotta know. Number one is if you see a bird on the ground, don't shoot it. Dogs accidentally get shot that way. Safety is the most important. There's always another bird out here, always. There he is, he's popping out. Now he's popping back in. Okay, we want to move quick because he's running. He's running like crazy toward you, Renee. Fetch it, fetch it. Put it up, put it up. There he is. Nice shot. Dead. Hatch. Coming up, coming up. Whoa. Let's get to the back of the line. Man, that was a good shot. Okay, as many as you want. Okay, I'll give him to you. Hatch Ranch is located just a few miles from the beautiful San Rafael Swell, making the backdrop for an upland game bird hunt unique in Utah. The scenery, well, it's downright spectacular. Right at the edge of, of our place, we have 100 foot cliffs that surround us. It's really interesting, most guys like to hunt there because if you hunt along the ditches that run along that cliff, then as you shoot, go behind you guys. So you get the reverberation, the echo, <laughs> and it just sounds so neat that, uh, and it's really interesting to watch birds fly along the edge of those cliffs as you're, as you're shooting at them. Hatch Ranch is open to everybody. $25 gets you onto the property. After that, you pay for the bird you take. Or you can buy a lifetime membership for $450, $150 of which you get to harvest in birds. And on that membership, you can come as many times a year at no extra cost and invite as many guests as you want. You know, the best time to hunt Hass Ranch is in the winter. Those December, January times, when, when up on maybe the Wasatch Front or some other areas, you, you might have a lot of snow. It is rare that we have snow on our place that actually sticks and stays. Nice shot. You could be hunting our place in January uh, and be hunting in 40 degree weather. There it is. That's some good shooting there. <laughs> it was uh, a good time out there watching the dogs work. They work hard. The birds are good. It was a good hunt. Well, Scott, not a bad day. Did you get some shooting? I did, I did. 
Yeah. And you actually hit one. I think I did. Okay, I think you backed me up on a couple. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and no Dick Cheney's out there. No, no. <laughs> it was good. It was nice and safe and fun. All right, hey, we've got more coming up here on KSL Outdoors and Green River area. Some more hunting in a moment, but first, tonight's quiz question. The Chinese ringneck pheasant, like many Americans, is an immigrant to North America. The first successful introduction of pheasants to this country occurred in 1881, when Judge Owen Denny shipped 30 Chinese ringnecks to his home in the Willamette Valley of Oregon. 11 years later, Oregon opened a 75-day season, and hunters bagged 50,000 birds. Our question tonight is, when and who introduced the pheasant into Utah? The answer, when KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford, returns. The KSL Outdoors Quiz Question is brought to you by Burt Brothers Tire and Service. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors and our pheasant hunt giveaway down here in Green River. Hey, in a moment we grab our shotguns and some four-wheelers from All Access Recreation Club and head out on a ride. That story in a moment, but first, tonight's answer to our quiz. And our question tonight is, when and who introduced the pheasant into Utah? And here's the answer. Early records indicate that the first pheasants were brought into Utah around 1890 and released near the mouth of Big Cottonwood Canyon. Peter Kesko Olson is credited with introducing the pheasant from Oregon to Utah. Subsequent introductions, natural dispersal, and an intensive game farm program resulted in the establishment of pheasants across the state by the 1940s. Day two of our Scent VIP Services pheasant hunt started off with a morning drive just across the Green River. Our winners hopped out of our 39-foot ride and geared up for some more shooting. Today we have Bobby, and that's Rosie, and Ram is the orange dog, and the, the yellow lab is uh, Trigger. Where'd it go, girl? Right here, get it, get it, get it. Don't get in there. Well, we're working a ton of scent here. I just can't find it. They're working something, I guess, right here. We worked it and worked it and worked it and just bumped a rabbit out. Man, working a rabbit. We patiently comb the fields as the dogs work the birds. Boy, this is thick. Might be too good a cover. It's in here somewhere. The tall, dry grass makes good cover for the pheasants to hold tight and makes it difficult for the dogs and the hunters to maneuver. Get it, 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 find it. There you go. Dad, to your left. Our group plucked several birds out of the sky, making day two of our hunt as successful as day one. In all, our group tallied over 40 of these fast flying, brush busting birds. Right there, boom, there you go. This is not my gun, this is Adam's gun. So, uh, he gets good half. Job. Yeah, he gets half. He gets half. <laughs> what is that, like number 10 today? 15 or 20, I think. <laughs> I think that's number two. There's a lot of quick shots out here. Us old reflexes are having a hard time. What a great opportunity it was to. Uh, Stuart and his son has had a great time out here. Gary Robison of Ascent VIP Services joined forces with KSL Outdoors to give our winners a VIP treatment that meant more than just some wing shooting. We had a chance to stay in this beautiful log cabin nestled in the foothills of the famed book cliffs. We have a 4,500 square foot home. We can we can sleep uh, 10 in beds. If you want to bring sleeping bags, we can fit more. We're right next to the book cliffs. This is uh, wildlife Mecca. Yeah. There's all kinds of wildlife here. That's what's wonderful about coming here. E even if you didn't hunt, come down here, ride the four-wheelers around here, hike, go see the Green River. There's yeah. so much to do here in this little old oasis away from everybody else. And with the help of All Access Recreation Club, we got an opportunity to explore the ranch and the surrounding area. <laughs> Always what you ha happens is you go through and you buy all these toys and guess what? You have to store them, you have to clean them, you have to license them, you have to do all those kind of things. That's the beauty of All Access Recreation. They do it for you and you just call them and they deliver it to your door. How good is that? We then take the four-wheelers up the canyon and almost immediately spot a herd of bighorn sheep casually grazing just off the Green River near Swayze's Rapids. It was awesome. Loved it. It was cool. 
Dogs are awesome. We had a good time. How can you not have a good time coming out here, shooting birds, oh, eating good, looking, looking at, at the country? Scenery. You just can't beat it. More coming up, but first, let's dive back into Salt Lake City for tonight's Fish Tech Fish Report. The Utah Field Guide is brought to you by Utah State Parks and Recreation and the Division of Wildlife Resources. Do something wild. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Meikle. How many times have you gone out, had a great pheasant hunt, you bring the bird back, and the meal is never as good as the hunt was? And Chef Peter with the Chef's Table from Orm, what are we doing wrong? Well, with, with birds, it's a little different than big game. With, with birds, the, the thing is, is we clean them okay. right away for convenience. Sure. We're worried about the best cuts, the breasts. Mm -hmm. You know, we throw away the feathers. We're worried about the mess of getting them home. So like so, this breast here, what, what was, is this good? Is this bad? It, it's great in one way, you know, in terms of ease for preparation, but it's bad for cooking. It's Why bad for taste. It's bad for flavor. You need that layer of skin. You need the little fat that are on the game birds to help insulate and protect the meat. If, if I expose that meat to high heat, to dry heat mm -hmm. cooking methods, it's going to dry out. It's going to singe up really quickly, and it's going to extract all the water. That's why game birds get tough. They're easy to overcook. Um, they lose their moisture very, very quickly, and there's no fat to introduce it to retain its flavor. So what do you do? We wrap them with fat. Oh, we, okay. we introduce fat in, in a number of different preparations. So show me one here. Well, well, classically, what we'll do is we'll take a, we'll take a bird... A, a breast like this that's been cleaned and cut off the bone and we'll take a beautiful piece of dried smoked um, ham. I've introduced bold flavors, garlic, pepper, bay leaves, sage, thyme, and then I'm going to wrap it in that fat. It's going to add a little bit of saltiness and it's going to add some moisture and as it cooks and renders down it's going to add flavor. So these are the ones that I've done earlier and, you, and I've seared them. The, the, the bacon you can see or the, the ham shrinks up but if you break it open and you look it's still rare and beautiful inside Ooh, and you and can you see how shiny it is Adam sure. it's still all that moisture and all that oil that that's coming from the, the natural pork fat is just going to complete the base that, that that pheasant breast and really make it nice and sweet and juicy a lot of times people overcook though don't absolutely they? absolutely why is you, that we're, we're just afraid of serving something to our guests that isn't cooked properly yeah. and you know I'd rather say hey cook it a little bit more and, and have it nice and juicy and moist than have it overcooked and dry so cook it about 25% less than you think and season about 25% more. What are the two dishes or three dishes actually you have here that are made out of pheasant? Well, the other thing that, I, that we didn't touch on is these are the legs and this is what happens when you roast them. That looks dry and terrible, right? So now these I've turned into great sausages. I've taken the legs, boned them out, marinated, introduced some fat, mm. introduced a little bit of chicken, dark meat chicken to it and turned it into a sausage. Great. And all this sausage is is a jerky in disguise. It's one that we haven't smoked and dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So next time you make jerky, cook one up, knead it that way first before you smoke it and dry it. Everybody knows how to Everyone smoke knows it how. and do jerky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the, the jerky capital of the world. Yeah, and a lot of it is presentation, and my gosh, look at this yeah. presentation. You went through a lot of work. It looks beautiful. Yeah, and it, it's going to eat really well, too, believe me. You guys did a lot of work out in the field, so we're going to enjoy it now. Chef's table, they can find you in Orm for catering. What do you guys do? We do everything. Full service, fine dining tablecloth. Uh, white tablecloth restaurant, uh, catering, you know, uh, chefstable.net. We have all our information, all our menus. We're, we're happy to take care of everybody. And you'll give it these two? Sure. Recipes oh. will be on our webpage. Very good. And look for those on ksl.com. We'll have more coming up here in a moment. But first, let's dive into tonight's Utah Field Guide. The Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep is native to rugged mountainous areas of western North America. Unfortunately, the species has been eliminated from much of its former range due to overhunting, habitat alterations, and diseases introduced by domestic livestock. In Utah, a great deal of effort has gone into reestablishing Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep, and the species can now be found in a number of mountain ranges. Solid and stocky with a large set of curled horns, the rams put on quite a show during the rut. Males engage in violent battles, smashing heads with other rams, all in a show of dominance and the right to mate. Fortunately, bighorn sheep have a double-layered skull honeycombed with bone struts to protect their brains and thick tendons linking the skull and spine to help recoil from the impact. November and December are great months to view these amazing animals, and coming up, the DWR is holding a free bighorn viewing event December 3rd along the Green River Corridor. That's where we found this herd grazing in the evening sun. For more information, log on to the DWR's website at wildlife.utah.gov. Well, the hunting's been good, but the weather has been fantastic. My wife actually said up in Salt Lake City they're getting snow down here. The sun's trying to come out, and we're just wearing a light jacket. 
Let's turn it over now to Kevin back in Salt Lake for tonight's recreation forecast. Hey, thanks a lot. The KSL Outdoor Snapshot of the Week is brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Meikle. We want to welcome a new sponsor to our outdoors family. Sportsman's Warehouse has joined our team, and we want to remind you, you can access their online store right on our website at ksl.com. KSLTV.com is your gateway to the Utah outdoors. Post and view photos that have been submitted to our Snapshot of the Week contest. And now you can shop online with Sportsman's Warehouse to find out their latest deals to get you outfitted the next time you head to the hills. It's all there on our brand new outdoors page at KSLTV.com. I'll tell you what's got a beautiful day down here. We've got